Puppet is a configuration management system designed to help system administrators deploy and manage software, users and configuration files on multiple servers across the network. In this demonstration I'm going to show you how to set up a basic Puppet configuration on our um, test server here, puppet.test.net, which is then going to configure our client server, client.test.net. The two things I'm wanting to achieve is um, to get Puppet to firstly modify the default message of the day banner on our client workstation or server which which appears when a user first logs in and secondly I'll be getting Puppet to install Emacs also on that um, client server. So to start with I'm just going to log into the, the main puppet.test.net server here and install using apt-get install Puppet Master the Puppet Master Daemon software. So with Puppet Master installed on our, our Puppet server, I'm now going to go onto the client machine and just apt-get install Puppet, which will install the client side software. Now the client side software by default is going to try and contact a machine with the host name of Puppet on the network. Um, because I'm not running DNS in my test environment here, um, the, my client machine can't resolve a host name of Puppet. So what I'm going to do to get around this is just cheat and add it to the slash etc slash host file. So with that line there, this, the client server now knows that my um, Puppet server resides at 172.16.1.1 and now if I ping Puppet I can get a response. So with the client side software installed and our server software installed we should now be able to run Puppet D minus minus test and that will connect up to the Puppet server and attempt to download a configuration. Now the notice that we're getting here saying no certificates is um, because we haven't signed a certificate to verify this host yet on our server. Puppet uses SSL encryption for sending configuration files and the manifest files across the network. So before our client here can connect up we have to sign the certificate. You can get a list of all the certificates that um, haven't been signed by clients that are trying to connect in by running Puppet CA minus minus list on your server and we can see here that our client.test.net machine has tried to connect up and hasn't got a signed certificate so in order to sign that puppet ca minus minus sign space client.test.net and that's going to sign our certificate so if we go back to our client server now and try running that puppet d minus minus test um, command again it should now be able to connect in so you can see the notice there saying got signed certificate. Now because we haven't actually configured it Puppet to do anything and it doesn't know what it should be doing with our server or configuration or applications to install, um, it hasn't done a heck of a lot at this point other than connect. So our next step is to get it doing something useful. If we go into the etc Puppet directory, this is where all the configuration files are kept. So you can see in here there's a couple of subdirectories, there's a files subdirectories and a manifest files directory, a subdirectory. If we go into the manifest directory we're going to create a new file called site.pp and in here we're going to create, it's called a node definition for our client.test.net server. And this the site.pp acts as kind of like an entry point for, for Puppet when a server connects in and requests um, configuration Puppet will look in this this file to see what it should be doing to that particular client machine. So the first thing I'm going to tell, um, tell Puppet to do to our test.net server is install this particular package Emacs 22 with no X. So I'm going to tell Puppet to make sure that's installed and the second thing we want to do is configure our message of the day file which is located, sorry actually before I do this I'll just log into the client system and just prove these packages aren't already installed so if I try and run Emacs here on our client you can see that's, that's it want to telling me that it's not there and 
I'll just show you on Ubuntu and Debian systems the message of the day banner that you'd get when you SSH into this machine is kept under the var run message of the day MOTD file so there we can see that's still just the, the default Ubuntu file so var run MOTD that file that we just had a look at on our client on the server we're going to tell Puppet that we want to um, change that the source of that file what it should change it to is located at Puppet, so files, message of the day. And Puppet's going to retrieve a new message of the day from there. So, obviously, the, the syntax that Puppet uses, um, it's a bit of a learning curve to it, but unfortunately, it's outside the scope of what I'm going to do in this tutorial right now. Uh, if you want to get a better insight as to how this particular manifest works, I would suggest going onto Reductive Lab's website and having a look at their resource types. So I'm just going to save this file here. Um, now that we've told Puppet we want to change the message of the day, we told it to get that out of the files directory and of course we're going to need to create that. So MOTD, we're going to create a new file called and this can just be anything we want to use to see when they first log in. So I'm going to just say if you don't work for my company please leave. Now there is one last thing that needs to be done. In order for our client to be able to download that file from the server, we first need to give give it permission to access files on our server. And this can be done by editing the file server.conf file. And into here I'm just going to add a new line that tells Puppet to allow anything from the 172.16 network which is the network I've used for my servers. Um, after doing that you'll need to um, reload the Puppet Master Daemon by using invoke puppet rc sorry invoke dash rc dot d puppet master reload and that should pretty much be it um, with our simple configuration. So I'm back on the client system now. Um, I'm going to run puppet d minus minus test to tell it to connect to the puppet master server. And if all goes to plan, it should install Emacs and change our default message of the day. So you can see it's starting its catalog run now. And it should be obtaining those configuration files. Uh, we can see that it's said that it's just installed the Emacs software and it's found that the message of the day was different to what, sh what it should have been, what's specified in the manifest, and it's also changed that. So um, just to illustrate that now, what I'm going to do is SSH into that machine. On my computer it's just called VMnet2, but it is the, um, the Puppet Client machine. And you can see there now when I SSH in, there's our message of the day. Um, Let's check to see if Emacs is installed just by running Emacs. Works. So um, hopefully that gives you a bit of an insight as to what you can do with with Puppet. Now, this the configuration file I've used here. You, we've implemented it on one server. If you had a hundred servers in your network that you want to change the message that you the day for and um, and install Emacs on the same principles apply so this can really be a, a very powerful tool to save a lot of a lot of time uh, thanks for watching